How dangerous is it to swim with wild stingrays? This wildlife attraction has become very popular in places like the Cayman Islands, Antigua, Belize, Australia, Moria, and Mexico. People obviously love it. Cayman Islands alone estimate close to a million visitors to stingray sites annually. And did you know that there are approximately 2,000 stingray injuries annually in the U.S. alone? And a majority of mild cases are not reported at all? Can you imagine how many stingray attacks happen worldwide? These incidents are not so rare, as Stingray City tour guides may try to convince you. Mostly due to a complex venom effect, a mild stingray injury may cause headaches, nausea, vomiting, fainting, low blood pressure, arrhythmia, and even seizures. Someone with a wound like that can end up in the emergency room for stitches, antibiotics, painkillers. If cartilage or nerves are damaged, that person may face surgery. So not only does it spoil your vacation completely, but an injured person may experience long-term consequences. And in spite of knowing this, we decided to take a tour to Antigua Stingray City. I was worried. I knew that stingrays have long whip-like tails with one or more razor-sharp serrated barbs, which they use to stab their predators. When they feel threatened or disturbed, they can flick their barbs upward as a defense mechanism. It's an involuntary reflex. After we arrived at Stingray City, we were given a 10-minute informed consent lecture about how we should behave ourselves around these large, dangerous wild sea creatures, how rare the incidents of stingray attacks were, and how safe it is to swim with them. Then we signed a liability waiver. We were also asked to remove our shoes before we got on the boat, and my first thought was, well, they just don't want dirt on the boat. But I was wrong. No shoes are allowed in the water, either. I was confused. How do my crocs somehow harm the stingray? And without my crocs, I am way more susceptible to an injury from the stingray. Oh well. Antigua Stingray City is a small private site in the open sea, located approximately 2.5 kilometers offshore in a shallow sandbar behind a coral reef. It took us 10 minutes to get there by boat. And if you want to come here on your own, via your boat or your own kayak. I guess if you want to visit not even just that place, but the coral reef around that area, without negotiating a deal with the company, you can potentially get in trouble. Well, when we got there, there were already some staff members feeding stingray with frozen squid. They were trying to attract the fish to designated spots where the water was not too deep. That day, the weather was windy and the waves made the water murky. The place looked absolutely different from the photoshopped photos in the advertisements. There was a floating dock from which our group of 10 people could get into the water. And so the fun began. Staff members fed squid to the stingray and huge stingrays were bumping at us, sniffing and steadying us and even trying to suck on our cameras and our fingers, begging us for more food. Just five minutes after the messy show started, one lady from our group was stabbed by a stingray. According to her, she didn't do anything to provoke the attack, was just simply standing in the water. Luckily, her puncture wound wasn't very bad, but due to a very severe pain, she got out of the water and was blaming staff for lying that it was absolutely safe and that attacks rarely happened. What were the odds? Only 10 people, five minutes in the water, and one of us was already injured. Shortly after the accident, many people lost interest and got scared, they got out of the water. Everyone was just sitting on the floating dock, wasting their time, eager to go back. So my advice is for you to think twice before you decide to take a stingray trip, especially if you have kids with you. Of course, these accidents resulting in death is rare. Caribbean Southern Stingrays are comparatively smaller than Australian short-tailed stingrays, the ones that killed the famous crocodile hunter, Steve Irwin. Fortunately, it is rare to have a vital organ punctured by a stingray's barb. But how bad is human interaction for stingrays? Many researchers show that feeding stingrays changes their natural behaviors. In many places, including Florida, feeding marine wildlife to attract and show them off to tourists is illegal. So what exactly is the impact on the stingray themselves? 
Blood tests of human fed wild stingrays show that their immune systems were weakened and that they were in poorer health conditions than those not disturbed by tourists, making them much more vulnerable to disease. The two-year study, funded by the Guy Harvey Research Institute, found that supplemental feeding changes the activity patterns, feeding habits, and even reproductive habits of stingrays. This fish changes from a nocturnal forager over large areas to a diurnal beggar in a smaller area. They become somewhat like a couch potato. Stingray fish normally live solitary lifestyles, but in large numbers, they spread diseases and parasites. Stingrays also do not eat frozen squid in nature, but crabs, bivalves, and other crustaceans are their natural sources of food. All of this has a huge impact on marine life entirely in these areas through the disruption of the food chain. But authorities of these small islands are not in a rush to change situations, except placing hypocritical signs like do not touch marine life or minor restrictions like don't wear swimming shoes at Stingray City. Nothing really is done. I guess extracting money from this multi-million tourist attraction is much more important. 